these four things you must have in order to make a relationship work. Let's jump into this. The first one is grace. As I looked up the definition for grace, because we use the word a lot, but let's let's look at the definition. It is from Merriam-Webster, a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. It's mercy, right? So a lot of times we kind of use this in uh, religion, Christianese, if you will. You got to have grace. And it's, it talks about the definition of having mercy. Now, if you plan on having a relationship for a long time or you plan to marry and you want to have longevity, grace is important because you will mess up with your broken self. <laughs> you aren't perfect. Your significant other isn't perfect. Your spouse isn't, isn't perfect. Uh, so it's important that you have grace because when they mess up, you have to learn how to look over their faults or it's just best to stay single for the rest of your life because everybody have issues. Everybody have things that they're going through. Now, let me say this, that there are some behaviors. There's there's some habits that's detrimental to a relationship. So if you are dealing with some of those things and, and I don't want to get into that, that's a, another segment for another time. But if your safety is in jeopardy or, or things of that nature, then I'm not saying that's that's when the grace stops because you can love them from a distance. So I want to make sure that I say that because I don't want anyone saying that, you know, I Sean said, give him grace and, and, and he's running the streets and or she's doing this and that. I'm not saying that. Again, it's all about safety and protection and, and feeling that in your relationship. If you don't have that in your relationship, then it's best to leave. So I just want to make sure that I say that. But for the most part, for the most of us who have issues and some things that we're trying to work through, I think grace is very important, especially if you plan on having a relationship for a long time. you got to have grace. The next one is empathy. And I looked up the definition through Miriam Webster and empathy is, and I love this definition, is the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of another. I thought that was beautiful. And when you have empathy, when your significant other or your spouse is struggling in a certain area, you can come out of yourself and to put yourself in their shoes. So this whole grace and empathy thing, they kind of interchangeable. They they kind of work together, but people who don't have empathy, they, they come in from a, a place of judgment. You're never really going to feel protected or you're never really going to feel seen or heard because you're being judged based on something that you did or even if it's something in your past something in your past might be hindering your your current relationship and you decided to share that issue or whatever happened in the past and if they don't have empathy for you you're going to feel that you're again like you're not being heard or they don't value you like they don't look at you as a whole person they look at you as disgusting or something or you know so when they're looking at you through those negative lens when they're looking at you through that lens the love isn't going to be there because they're looking at you as less than or how could you do such a thing so when you're looking through life when you're looking at that person through those lens the relationship will never really grow fully in what it's uh, intended to be loving and caring and protected and, and feeling safe so you got to have empathy. There was a time um, when there were some things that I was going through with my divorce and, and some things that I had talked to my wife about, just some things in my past. And for her to have the empathy for me, it made me feel like she really loved me. So it made me feel like, OK, I can share some things with her because she's taking herself out of the situation and she's walking in my shoes. And were, was asking questions. And at first I used to feel like, why are you asking me all these questions? But she really just wanted to know. So she can have that empathy for me. And because, of course, you know, women are very detailed. So once I started to go deeper in depth about things that you know, things I've been through in my past, 
it helped her to love me more because now she's understanding. And even why I might have certain issues going on today because of things that I've been through in my past. So I think empathy is a very important trait. The third one is the willingness to change and unlearn. This right here is very important. Again, going through a relationship and you plan on having uh, marrying someone till death do you part or you want to have the longevity of a relationship, change is going to happen. I remember T.D. Jake saying one time that a lot of relationships end or marriages end because of the turn. He used the example of being on a motorcycle, the man in the front, the woman in the back, and this isn't demeaning in any way. I'm just saying that the man is driving the motorcycle and the woman is on the back, okay? And and that turn, when you make a turn, if you aren't aware, you can lose that person in the back. You know, you've probably seen an accident that where somebody made a sudden turn too fast or something, and they end up losing the person off the back of the bike because of the turn. And when you aren't aware of the turn, when you're going through different things in life, and that person isn't aware of it, you can lose them. Right. Because we're never really the same. We're either progressing or regressing. The thing is, is to make sure that you are speaking with your significant other or your spouse about where you are in life right now. I used to think like that when I was, you know, 25. But now I think like this when I'm 30. So when you're thinking different, you got to make sure that you bring that to your spouse or your significant other. So that way they learn how to pivot and change with you. One of the issues I had in my 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 last marriage was we weren't aware of our changes. You wake up one morning and you change. You change over time. And when you don't have those conversations, you wake up and you're like, who are who is this person? I don't even know who they are. So when I tell people that, my my ex-wife and I, when we grew apart, we did because we weren't keeping a pulse on where we were in life. And that can be detrimental to any relationship. So you got to have change. And with that, you have to be willing to unlearn. Again, I think this go hand in hand. Are you willing to unlearn some things? What did you learn in the past? What did your mom teach you? What did your dad teach you growing up? What did people in the streets teach you? What did people in the hood? Like all these different messages that we've gotten from people uh, growing up, you realize that some of them aren't true. Some of them doesn't work. People were just like in survival mode. So they would tell you certain things to help you get through. And it's in your programming, right? You're thinking of these things and all of a sudden it's downloaded in, in you it's almost like your default setting because of what people have told you time and time again growing up and even what you have seen. And what might have happened back then worked back then, but it might not work now. Now, I do believe that there are some truths that some things will never change, right? Some things will never change like human behavior, right? But for the sake of this conversation, are you willing to unlearn those things and be willing to learn something new and to make the necessary changes in your relationship to make sure that your your relationship prospers? So be willing to unlearn. The last one is friendship. I know this might sound a little cheesy, might sound a little corny, but you got to have the friendship. I, I mean, it's it's a beautiful thing when your spouse, your significant other, when y'all have little inside jokes and y'all can laugh together and uh, do life together. Y'all don't have to like everything together. You don't have to do everything together. I, I, I get it. You should be able to have the freedom to express yourself in other ways through hobbies and, and, and enjoyment and just enjoying your own company. So I do believe that. But I do believe that there should be some things that you both can enjoy together in building that friendship, whether if it's going painting or Maybe you just like to go for a ride, you know, and enjoy the weather, just small things, who knows. But if that's something that you both can enjoy together, it deepens the intimacy in the relationship. And also, because for me, one thing that really works for me and I've learned over time is my, I don't, I love my wife. She's, she's my wife, right? But we have a friendship that's so great that I don't ever want to do anything to, 
damage our friendship. Right. So even though she's my wife, there's things that I don't do because I don't want to I don't want to hurt her because she's my best friend. And when we look through that lens, we realize like my best friend, they would they're going to look out for me and I'm going to look out for them. So when you have that mindset, it just builds the relationship. It makes it that much stronger to, to create a bond that no one really can break. So I think that those are the four things that you need in order to help your relationship prosper. You got to have grace. You got to have empathy. You got to change and unlearn. And then you got to have the friendship. Hey, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you share this video with someone. Share it in your group chat. I know sometimes the ladies and, and you know guys, they got their little group, their little group chats on their phone and stuff. Make sure you put that video in a group chat because someone might need that video and have a discussion about it, right? Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.